Hi guys. Good to see you all. Um, and let's get straight into it. Uh, I'm going to be showing you a few drills for handstands. Um, maybe a bit of forearm handstands. Handstands just to test your strength and uh, get you closer to keeping up to the wall and being comfortable there, okay? Thank you, Tamara. Very sweet. Okay, so turn off commenting. Let me go straight to the drills. Get a mat. You're going to need one. I have artificial grass here which is comfortable for me, so you may need a mat. Well, you will need a mat. Okay, so, um, what I want to try to see, I mean, yesterday we were doing headstands. What I want to see uh, you guys try to do is to do forearm headstands, okay? So, the way I want you to try to make it work is have your hands placed in front of you, straight. Okay, get on your toes and try to walk up all the way. Build some strength in your forearm and walk back. Get back on your knees. Relax. When you get up here, try to go up. And drop. This is going to help to build strength in your shoulders. It could be a stepping stone for you eventually to get on your hands. Some people actually find forearm handstands harder. I find it a bit harder as well in, in some circumstances. I learned forearms after handstands, but but it could be, be why it could be useful is that I never felt a discomfort being upside down as a kid. I used to do like random things and try to pick up the handstands. So the fear of being upside down never bothered me. If you have a fear of being upside down, this could be a good start because you're closer to the floor. And I mean, the likelihood of you falling from here and getting injured is quite unlikely. So if you're here, you keep that push in your shoulders, just like we're learning. Shoulder blades are like this. You're always pushing. You're not relaxing into your shoulders, always pushing up. So imagine you're in this position as well, where your elbows are right underneath your shoulders. You're gripping onto your mat or onto the floor or even into your hands, but I would rather you grip here. And then from here, you try to kick slowly, come back down. Kick slowly, come back down. Try to find that wall, okay? If you just kick a little bit, just a little bit, you're going to be able to tap onto the wall. So walk your hands back a little bit and keep doing that, just so that you land on the wall, okay? So from here, you're going to lift that leg. One, two, and you're going to swing, touch the wall, come back. Touch the wall, and what, at some point you'll be able to put your feet on the wall, and then come back down. All right, that will help you a lot in terms of building into that upper body strength. If you don't get get to the wall, just keep whipping. The key thing to remember is that it's the fear. I mean, obviously you need to have uh, upper body strength, but in many many cases. It's the fear that's stopping you from kicking. You think if you kick too hard, you may somehow fall, you may break the glass. I mean, I've heard all the stories. People have these crazy fears. Maybe you may uh, dislocate your shoulder, hurt your neck in a headstand, uh, pop your neck in a headstand. It's really unlikely for it to get, it doesn't happen actually, for it to get dangerous like that. It's just a mental blockage, just like, a backflip is a mental blockage, you're worried that you're going to land on your head, but if you get the right technique, you're going to be able to do it. So if you whip and whip and whip, keep whipping harder and harder, at some point, eventually your foot will land on the window or the wall. So once you get here, you're pushing into your shoulder blades, you're not dropping, pushing up, okay? You're staying in this push position. You're going to try from here to do one, two, and whip, find the wall. When you find the wall, try to hold here, okay? Try to hold, 30 seconds would be great. Do not worry too much about form over here. I think the priority for me is for you to get on your hands or to get upside down. Keep looking in between your hands. You can even look behind you here or between your hands and try to tap the wall slowly. Do not try to look for the wall with your back. 
just stay straight as long as you can. Once you feel that heavy blood flow in your head and it starts getting tired, get out of it, okay? So if you manage to do it that way, another way you can try, or actually if you do not manage to do it that way, this could be another way to try it. So you're here on your forearms, get a bit of room, you walk up, walk up, walk up, over here. Once you walk up the wall, this is how you start. You're down here, you're pushing the floor. Find the wall and you walk up, you walk up, you walk here. Try to eventually, if you're in a straight line, try to walk your feet down so that your butt becomes on top of your wrist and shoulders and try to hold here. Just hold for now. There's no need to lift up or anything. All you need to do is hold this position to build some strength. Eyes in between your hands, or your eyes can be behind you over there. Walk down slowly, land on the floor safely. All right? Um, the more advanced variation, and this is for the, the ladies and the gentlemen that are unable to do this, or they find it's too easy and they want to move it up a, a, a notch into handstands, it goes the same way, okay? So from here, the only difference between this and this is that you just have slightly more height here. But all of the drills are gonna be exactly the same. Everything you need to do in order to kick up is the same. So from here, what you wanna do is try to use your jump, all the while keeping your ears in between your shoulders. So you're not jumping like this. The second you move from this position to this position, you're not gonna go up. If you're arched, your leg is not gonna be able to whip from here. Like how the hell are you gonna whip your leg from here? That's why you need to stay inside. When you're in and you're looking the other way to help you, this is very much more likely for you to jump than this. Okay, so first things first, if you're unable to jump, the likelihood is you are not remaining in the scapula position. You've decided to arch, or you are not aware that you're arching, and then you're sort of doing like a sporkin tail thing, and there's nothing that's gonna keep you afloat there. Try to maintain this position, and try to whip from that position. A good way to do it is to sometimes to help you do, uh, use momentum. So assume your wrists are here. Like we talked about at the very beginning, in your handstand drills, you need to have your shoulders on top of your wrists and your ears tucked in in order for you to do a correct handstand. So wrists underneath shoulders, push into it with your elbows, head tucked in. Okay, keep that in mind. So. If I'm going to jump into my handstand and I'm all the way back here, where are my shoulders? My shoulders are behind my wrists. So obviously that's not the right place to be. But what you can do in this regard, let me just turn the screen for you guys to see me. Okay. What you can do here, just to get some momentum, is lean back into this crouch position and jump. Lean back and jump. When you're jumping, you're not jumping back here. If you jump back here, that means my shoulders are still behind my wrists. So instead of thinking of your feet, why don't you start by thinking that you want to get your shoulders on top of your wrists. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to bend and I'm going to try to jump high enough so that my shoulders reach here. So I'm going down, jump high enough, until my shoulders reach there. Find the floor. You don't need to find the, find the wall just yet. Bend, jump high enough until your shoulders reach there. If you find yourself jumping like this, all your focus needs to be right now is your shoulders. Are they on top of my wrists or not? If I'm jumping like this, I still don't see my shoulders on top of my wrists. I still don't see it. I still don't see it. I'm still back. So I have to find it in me, the courage in me, without freaking out and thinking that you're gonna hit this. You will not hit this if your head stays in. 
The idea is to keep the focus. Shoulders on top of wrists and head inside your shoulders. So here, great, here, great. If you manage to, find the wall. But keep using that courage to jump and to get your butt on top of your wrists and shoulders. Okay, that's, that's quite important. Um, if you keep thinking of your legs before anything else, you're, I mean, nothing's gonna work unless your foundation is solid, okay? Like we've discussed, wrists underneath shoulders. Ears need to be tucked in, the ears need to disappear. Your shoulders have to land on top of your wrists for your legs to go up. So if you're wondering why you're not able to kick, please take a look at your shoulders and assess whether they have landed on top of your wrists or not. And the worst thing that's gonna happen, I will show you worst case scenario, keeping your elbows locked. You jump, okay, fine, my head just hit the window. My head hit the window. My head hit the window, it's okay. It's not, it doesn't cause any damage, it doesn't hurt, but just, it's better to try a little bit than to be fearful, to be sort of pushing back, but kicking, and this pushback position where you're, all your weight is on your palms because you're just not ready to give it a go is not gonna help you reach that goal where your shoulder needs to be on top of your wrists. The idea is, if you wanna know how to get your shoulders on top of your wrists, think of where the pressure in your hands are. If you continuously feel the pressure in the back of your palms and you're pushing back and you're pushing sort of the floor away from you and you're jumping but all the pressure's in your palms you're not getting your shoulders on top of your wrists. If at some point you feel the weight shifted and the weight is no longer in your palms but you feel weight in your fingers, you're jumping high enough, okay? I hope that makes sense. I'll answer some questions. Turn on commenting. Zena, 6241 shouting out your name. Any questions, guys? First move was your head on the floor or off, off the floor. I was trying to just use my shoulders, okay? It's different to a headstand, it's a, it's a um, forearm handstand. Uh, your gaze would be in between your fingers, ideally, or better yet, look behind you, but do not look forward to the point where your ears are showing the other side. You're, you have to stay in this position. This is something else I wanted to tell you guys. I'm gonna look really weird explaining this to you, but the, the, the difference between, like people tend to make a mistake with handstands. Let's say I'm in a handstand. Actually, I'm gonna do it this way, okay? so. There's a difference when, when people tell you gaze in between your fingers, okay, or gaze on, on, at the floor, it's not like this. That is my head looking in between my fingers. What I need, what gazing in between your fingers is, is only lifting your eyebrows. I'm lifting my eyebrows and now I'm looking in between my fingers. From here, lifting my eyebrows and I'm looking in between my fingers. But I'm not moving my head forward, okay? It's just the eyebrows, guys. You're here, you're looking like this. And it's not a full head motion. Okay, what else? Uh, I understand, Huda, uh, for falling. Tomorrow, not tomorrow. On Sunday, I'll explain how to fall out of a, out of a handstand, okay? I just need to give some time to that, but um, there's a way you will not get injured if you fall out of a handstand, so I'll teach you that. your comments guys um, 
Khaled, you have to straighten your elbows. Um, there are some exercises that will help you with, uh, with straight arm strength. I'll give you one as an example. One second. So assume this is a weight, okay? Or a heavy bottle and you have two heavy bottles in your hand. Lie down here, lift and drop. Or better yet, bring them together and drop back. Anyone that's struggling with bending your elbows, try working on your straight arm strength, okay? Find two heavy bottles or two weights, bring them together and drop. Keep your arms totally straight. Do not bend your arms and bring them back. You have to try to keep your elbows straight in your handstand for you to save yourself because what, the minute you bend your elbows, it's very difficult to save yourself and push back up. So keep your elbows locked. Where did I get to? I'm so glad, you know. I'll tell you how to lose, uh, how you fall out of a handstand, Mariam, on the uh, next class on Sunday. You can't get your feet up on the wall. You need to push against the wall. So if you're barely putting any pressure on the wall, then there is no stick. You need to put some pressure with your toes on the wall for it to stick and walk up. Maybe you're wearing socks on the wall, try to wear shoes or try to be barefoot. And an easy way, uh, let me just explain something else. An easy way to get your feet on the wall is not from down here. If you're down here, it's hard to walk up. So start by putting your hands on the floor, stand on your feet, okay? Then lift that foot, not here, not here, but try to lift it as high as possible, stick your toe, and then push up. This is how you get your feet on the wall, okay? Any other questions? You have to build shoulder strength 100%. They called me gifts uh, before, uh, before you uh, do handstands. And something that you can do is something I was teaching last time is a wall walk, if you're able to. Those are magic. If you can do every day three wall walks, trust me, you're gonna get much stronger. I'm gonna show you what a wall walk is in case you missed my other session. So, hands on the floor, one foot up, you're gonna get it as high as possible, stick your toe on, lift. And then from here, if you can, extend your legs and walk up a little bit and walk forward a little bit. You don't need to go all the way just yet. You don't even need to straighten your legs. Your legs can be here. You can walk up a little and you can walk down a little. That is gonna build so much muscle in your back and in your arms and it's gonna help you to do handstands. You should gaze ideally right in between your fingers, not forward, or you could look behind you, but I like to look in between my fingers because I feel safer. Okay. Um, Tiloy, I can't read your name, um, Tilois, uh, I will explain how to fall out of a handstand on Sunday, okay? Uh, it's not a, a Maria. It's not a weight issue to the handstand or not. It's a strength issue. It doesn't matter really your weight. If your if your upper body strength can carry your weight and you have that strength, you should be able to do a handstand. Veronica, if you're struggling, just try to stick with the drills that I'm, I'm teaching you more than just kicking up. Don't jump into kicking up. Start by wall walk. Start, start by forearm strength. Maybe do the hollow body. Maybe do shoulder taps on the floor. You know, start, start with these things just to get your upper body strong enough. And then at some point, you'll be able to kick up.
Shirin, Habibti, I miss you. Pancho's inside. Okay, okay, what else, what else? Shit, man, I'm missing all of your messages. I'm trying to read through them. Hey guys, uh, I don't know, I'm just getting a bit lost. So many messages are flooding. Okay guys, uh, it's hard to answer all these questions. There's so much happening. With lack of a trainer, how do I make sure I do it properly and safely? Um, I know it's hard, especially with handstands. And with lack of someone watching you, it's hard to correct you. I'm just hoping that you're able to correct your own form by watching mine for the time being. Hopefully I can start teaching soon. You can come to my class and then I can actually spot you. Okay guys, I'm gonna save the live. Thank you for um, for joining. I will be on at 5 p.m. today for 45 minutes and I'm doing lower body. Okay, it's leg day today. Um, see you soon.